Hello travelers. What fan speed should you use on your GPUs? How low of a temperature is too low? Is there such a thing as overcooling? It's a fair question and it raises a few points. So we'll talk about the slightly in-depth analysis. First, we'll start with my rigs here. Here's an A2000 rig and the temperatures it runs at. These have a custom fan duct and thermal pads changed on them. There's the intake temperature on them, and I'll switch that over to C for you. There you go, there's a Celsius. And we got another rack, 3070 FTW3s here. Temperatures on those guys. And I have an exhaust fan system over here. And that'll show you the exhaust temperature, right? Red is the indoor, and the intake temperature as the outdoor. There's the peaks for the day. This is running at a fairly low fan speed right now. Maintaining a differential of around 12 degrees inside and out. That's pretty fair. So it means there's a difference of 12 degrees from the intakes over there to the exhaust. The coldest to the hottest point is about 12 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, how do you know how much effort you should put into cooling your GPUs? How much fans, how much AC you should use in the event that you're using AC? And how hard should you run your fans on your GPUs? What's a good temperature? How much cooling do you really need? It's a fair question. On some cards, you might notice massive differences in temperatures from others. See the 5700 in there? Reasonably cool temperatures. The 3080, well, a little toasty on the memory temperature, right? Common issue with 3080s, especially founders. These are actually running relatively cool considering, but those are known to quite run, run quite hot. So there's always a debate between should you run your fans at 100% to run the cards cooler or should you tone your fans down? And then should you have dynamic fan speed changes? Should you allow the fans to adjust for temperature? Well, the major factors that influence a card's life are oftentimes actually the temperature range they're exposed to. And I talk about this more in the video. I'll link it over here where I talk about silicon degradation and the most common causes for failure. Turns out temperatures are only one factor. The temperature range they operate in can be more considerable. You want to minimize how often and how much they go from hot to cold. So what that means is if you're in an environment like this that's air-cooled, right, where you're bringing in outside air, you're exhausting it after running it past the hardware, what you'll get is you'll get temperature changes over the course of a day. And I can show you this on my PLC here. This is a custom fan control I made. This is the differential temperature over the course of a day. So not much change here. However, the absolute temperature, there's the outdoor temperature and the indoor temperature, right? The separation between the two is relatively uniform, but you can see a little bit of temperature change, not really that much. You know, we're in the lows of 80 or so and highs of about 90. So the temperature the cards were exposed to was actually a pretty narrow window today. And as a result, the fan speed barely changed over the course of the day. However, that isn't always the case. Sometimes you run into situations where the temperature outdoors change wildly over the course of the day, right? Or maybe it's winter and it's very cold outside and you have the option very easily to have the building very, very cold. How cold is too cold? What temperature should you run it at? Well, since your main concern isn't necessarily the absolute peak temperature, but rather the change in temperatures, really what you should try to do is seek a maintainable temperature that isn't particularly high and allows the cards good headroom, allows the cards the ability to heat up more and still run safely and comfortably. That should more or less always be your target. You shouldn't really be that concerned about getting these numbers down to 20C, 25C, 30C. Usually there's no benefit. Usually I would say anything below about 65C on the core and around 80C in the memory, that's pretty comfortable, it's pretty reasonable. And that's based on more or less known data from experience from running hardware. Other mines and farms that run a large amount of hardware, generally speaking, temperatures are actually less significant than people think. The more important factor is the difference in temperatures how the cards are run, the voltages they're exposed to, the conditions, things like dirt and stuff like that. If you're in a very dirty environment, that might kill your cards before temperatures do. And if you're running the cards just full bore, you're not paying attention to core clocks, and the voltage is high, the power is high, 
the voltage might kill your cards, or the design of the thermal cooler causing a voltage regulator to run hot. That might kill the cards before the temperature does. And if you're running the fans at 100%, well, now you've got to take into account the fans themselves, because on something like this, the Founders 3080, right? These fans are a bit unusual. It's kind of hard to just rip them out and replace them with a different type of fan. Other cards, like say this Zotac 3070, it's not that hard to rip this shroud off, replace this fan, or replace this entire fan assembly with an external fan, should the need be. So you gotta take that into account. How hard is it to replace the fans if you need to? How much of an impact is that, right? Because some cards are kind of hard to cool with external fans if the internal fans die. And other fans maybe are less reliable. Some of the cards, like the Zotac White Edition 3070s, are very well known for being very poor quality and so in that case maybe you want to try and save the fans if you can so running the fans higher wouldn't be a concern other cards like say the ftw series 3070s 3080s and etc these have great fans and there's three of them and since these run so cool even if one of the fans fail the card still runs cool and you can keep on chugging along and you could always pretty easily put a fan across it and it would effectively blow the air through and out the heat sink so these cards not really a big concern for the fans to fail. So you need to take these factors into account. You want to try and minimize the peak temperature as best you can while minimizing the temperature range that they operate in, right? But I wouldn't be as concerned as a lot of people are about the absolute peak temperatures. This honestly doesn't seem to be a problem. Although it's red and it makes it scary. I have it set up like that, right? But there's enough people running these Founders cards with 110 degree memory temperatures. It's less of a problem than most people would expect. Obviously you want to try and minimize it, but most likely for a lot of people, the memory temperatures won't be the cause for failure on these cards. Now, it increases the risk of failure. So if you can, try do something about it. But generally you would change the thermal pads on these because it means you could typically increase the hash rate anyways. So that should be your driving force. And it also improves efficiency a little bit. But you really just need to take all the factors into account. Temperatures matter, but only when they improve hash rates or when they're dangerously high. When you have the option, say you're in a very cold environment and you can run it really cold ambient temperatures and you're wondering, well, how cold is too cold? Is there an overcooling problem? Sort of, maybe. Ideally, you would have something like a temperature controller that would automatically manage your temperatures so that you could operate your interior building temperature in a very narrow window. That would be ideal, right? Then say it changes temperature outside from freezing to just above freezing and below freezing. You would always try to run your temperature more or less as close to constant inside your building as you can, right? You wanna to try to ensure that your cards see as little temperature delta as possible so they're not changing up and down and up and down, right? Because for a given fan speed, the cards more or less will cool the same amount over ambient. The temperature they will be will be about the same amount over ambient. So as ambient increases, the card temperature is gonna increase, right? Mostly. Now, you can set up automatic fan control in the miner, and for some conditions and some cards, it's actually a good idea. I use it on all my rigs. It's pretty reasonable solution and a lot of miners like I'm using G minor here will support this well they'll dynamically adjust the fan speed to compensate for temperature changes and so what that'll do is on top of maybe any of your building controls that you have you could have your hardware change the fan speeds and you can set your min and your max and pick an operating range right and how I set that up is I more or less figure out how cool does a car run 100 what's the minimum I could get away with and still get temperatures where I maintain full hash rate, no degradation to performance, and they're not right on the edge of thermal throttling, right? So on something like a 3070, I would be shooting for ideally 65C at the core would be a good target temperature. If you could do lower, that's great. But if you need a lot of fan speed to do lower than that, then it might not be worth it. It's kind of a balancing act, right? Like if you need 90% 90 fan speed to maintain 65C on this card because you have a bad cooler or you're in a very hot environment, then I would consider maybe toning the fan speed down a little bit because now you're running the higher risk of your fans wearing out before your card fails, right? So it's kind of a trade-off with everything. It's kind of a balancing act. You want to figure out 
what's the most likely thing to fail? And well, it's a bit of a guessing game, but you can use your best judgment to try to speculate. And on things where you have multiple fans, very large heat sinks, a lot of thermal overhead because the things run so cool normally, you could get away with a lot. And these will comfortably run 45 to 50% fan speed. Now, generally there isn't much benefit to running the fans that slow. The fans, usually you want to shoot for 50%, 55, 60% never over 80, 85 if you can get away with it. Now this is a general rule, but the fans usually are most efficient around 50, 60, 70%. And usually they last the longest when you run them slower. Oftentimes it's diminishing returns. So if you run the fans at 20%, it may not really matter much to the fans life. And on top of that, most likely everything else in the car is gonna fail before the fans at that point. So everything's a trade off. It's just a question of how hard the fan is to replace, what your temperatures are, what your primary driving characteristics are. But if you're getting full hash rate, the temperatures aren't on the edge of thermal throttling, and there's not much you could do about it in the way of building cooling, well, I wouldn't be as concerned as a lot of people are. I would think, for the most part, as long as you're a little bit under thermal throttling, you're probably okay. Um, obviously, it depends on the hardware design, and this works better at scale. Like if you have one, two, three, four GPUs, a small rig, then I could see why you would be more concerned about temperatures. But as you scale up, most people run into a situation where the thermals get uncontrolled, but it's very hard to manage the heat, and you really can't get away with taking the care of the one car like you used to be able to with a small farm. So things to consider, things to think about, but there is sort of such a thing as overcooling. Not really. The cooler the better, but there really is very little benefit to having the cards running at 10C or even colder. And more often than not, especially if they're in a building, say a wood frame structure, or with any surfaces, drywall, and things like that, a lot of your material surfaces and stuff like that won't like very cold temperatures. And on top of that, this is a wood frame structure. If you have a wood frame structure as well that your cards are in that you're cooling with airflow, the risk is if your building's very, very cold, you increase the risk for things like mold growth and stuff growing in the walls and the walls staying wet and the wood rotting. So that's something to consider as well, something to take into account. You don't want your building operating at very, very cold temperatures usually, unless maybe you have a steel building, concrete, cement, brick, or something like that, where it'll be more tolerated uh, to those sorts of conditions. But really, you gotta consider all the factors in your environment figure out what matters the most for you. But generally speaking, if you're getting full hash rate, you got a little overhead, it's decent. I wouldn't be as worried as a lot of people are. So, till next time, stay hashing.